4-1 then, Manchester City, top of the table by three points and a one goal better goal difference to Chelsea now. Look at the shots on target, 16 to 10, fairly even. There were periods when Liverpool were on top in that match, but Manchester City coming away with an all-important 4-1 win. Player of the match then was Bunny Shaw. A couple of goals for her. Let's hear from her with Mary Fowler and Emma. Well, congratulations to you both. Four goals, three points, top of the table, crucially. I mean, you must be pretty happy with that as an afternoon's work, Mary. Yeah, really happy. You know, we came out here, we wanted to get the win and get it in a good way, and I think we did that today. Bunny, last weekend you became the club's record goal scorer. You're showing no signs of slowing down, are you? Yeah, you know, like I've always said, like I try to do the best that I can to help the team and, you know, the girls give me the ball, so if I don't score, they're going to be on top of me. So I just try to put myself in the best possible position to score and help the team. Two great goals. One, an absolute rocket. Take us through it from your perspective. I imagine it's one you'll remember for a while. You know, right now I'd have to probably see it back a little bit. Um, but um, I just think, like, when the ball bound, bubbled up on me, I was just like, I'm going to take the shot. Um, and then as soon as it left my, left my foot, I saw it, like, whistling in the top corner. So, yeah, overall it was a, it was a good goal and I'm happy. And Mary, two assists for you. I mean, it's competitive area of the pitch, isn't it? But you must be so pleased with your contribution at the moment. Yeah, really happy. You know, I think everyone is just all on the same page, wanting to get the win, wanting to get our goals tally up. So, anyway, I'm able to help. I'm happy to be able to do that. Perhaps the only stain on the afternoon, not to come away with a clean sheet, just with that goal difference in mind. Yeah, it's annoying, but that was a banger. You know, if we've let a banger in, you know, I think that's... that's it's not happy to get a goal in, but if it's a banger, it feels a little bit less worse. But, um, yeah, you know, they put up a good fight. Um, and, yeah, I think it was good for us to get a few more goals, um, get the goal tally up. The main thing, though, three points, top of the table, just to have that psychological edge now going into the break, what does that mean? Yeah, definitely. We, we spoke as a team and we, we said that we want to go into the international break, you know, being top of the league and, and put pressure. Um, we said, let them chase us, you know. So I think ultimately coming out here, we wanted to, to get the three points, of course, like you said, um, letting that one in at the, the last minute. But overall, it was a, it was a good performance and so we just take the win. Yeah, congratulations on a great team performance. But Mary, if you wouldn't mind doing the honours, Bunny, you are the player of the match once more. There you go. Oh, I don't know if she's got space for these at home. <laughs> They're all adding up. Thank you. <laughs> Make space for them. Make space for them. Instead of jumpers for goalposts, be player of the match. Um, Mark, uh, as a goalkeeper, if it's a banger, it's all right. So we'll park that one <laughs> just for now. Mary Fowler, though, seeing her, you talked about her before the game and, and her assists and what she brings to this City side. She's keeping mm -hmm. Chloe Kelly out of the team at the moment. Another assist for her. No, another two assists Another today. two assists. Yeah, which, which is brilliant. Um, it's great to see her playing more more regularly. Um, that's something that obviously started off the season playing, didn't quite fall into place for her, but then was a bit of the time out of the team, now back in and having making a real contribution to the side. It's, um, and, and it's the right timing. They need goals, they need, they need assists. Um, she's replacing a phenomenal player in Chloe Kelly, so the pressure is on to deliver. As you can see there, she's so cool, she's so calm, and she just takes everything in her stride. I mean, she's a quality player. Two goals, three assists in her last four in, in all comps. You'd expect her to be doing this in her second season, though, wouldn't you? Is it, is it just because she's got Chloe Kelly on the bench we're surprised? Mm. I, I think it's... There's a combination of things. I think the fact that she's settled in now, she's had that season under her belt, she's gotten used to the environment, the level of training. I think that was also a big jump up for her from what she was used to in France. The step up into the WSL, the, the level of professionalism and expectation at a club like City. Um, I think gaining more responsibility and more experience for the national team during the Women's World Cup. Mm. I thought she was ex uh, exceptional for Australia. And she's carried that on now. And I think... This is the time now for her to start growing and really cementing a position in, in, into the team. Um, that's how good a player I think she can be and is. It, it, it shows from Gareth Taylor as well, having not started last season to get those nine starts this season, how he's built her into that role as well. Let's move on to someone else you picked out beforehand and, and Jess Park. If we go to that, that first goal, it was all about her, her creation and composure then from Lauren Hemp. Yeah, it's a, a bit of tenacity and... You, you know, you see this Lauren Hemp goal, the way it starts, the way that Bunny Shaw, she peels off. It's a wonderful ball out. But look at Laura Coombs there. She's making sure she replaces the space that Bunny Shaw has left. And that's important to, to occupy our defenders. It's great work from uh, Mary Fowler in here. Jess Park, it's a, a fantastic shot. 
But again, as I say, Laura Coombs is in there if Lauren Hemp doesn't get there first, but she does. Um, and it's a fantastic finish. And that's what you want from the forward players. Being on your front foot, ready to anticipate if it does get spilled, I'm going to be there. Um, and yeah, by Lauren Hemp's standards, that's probably one of the easiest goals she's going to score this season. Parks shot the assist then for that first goal and then she follows it up with a with her own for the, the second to make it 2-0. It's a quality finish because she doesn't she doesn't try to hit it too hard. She places it. You know, she hits it with obviously intent, but she picks out that corner. You can see it. She just lifts her head as she just about hit this ball. And 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 she looks for that corner and just you know finds it perfectly inside the, the inside of the post. Um, so yeah, great, great finish. She's a top, top quality player. We talked about it before the game. Um, and uh, massive future for her. And what a player to have in your side coming towards the end of the season when you need to bit of push on. She's got so much energy and so much class. And a couple of minutes later, Bunny Shaw makes it 3 0. At this stage, you're thinking, how many from Manchester City? Yeah, you are. And they were speaking about bangers there, Mary Fowler and uh, Bunny. Well, this is certainly one from her. And she's right in terms of the way it sits up, your sort of eyes light up as a striker. Um, and, you know, strikes through it so, so well. I think the defending from Gemma Bonner, I think we'll see it just here. Could be better. She dives in, uh, makes Bunny Shaw's life a little bit easier. And I'm saying a little bit because she's <laughs> still 20-odd yards out and, you know, it absolutely flies top corner. So she'll be very happy with that. I'm sure she said she wanted to watch it back. Well, I'm sure when she watches it back, she'll be more than happy. Got a little bit stodgy then between then and, and half time. They go in, 3 nil up, come out for the second half mark and, and Bunny Shaw gets the second and you're thinking, right, again, are they going to pile on? That's the disappointment. I think for 50 minutes or so, um, Manchester City were in total control. Looked like they were going to run away with this game. I mean, I mean they won the game comfortably, but you felt that they would go on and score possibly five, six, um, you know, goals in total. But, you know, it's a straightforward goal. It's a set play. It's a, it's a good delivery in the box. Enough Liverpool players around, Bunny Shaw, but they just, they just can't deal with it. And Bunny Shaw, you know, a good header, get on the end of it. You know, if you get yourself in the right place, timing's right, um, right direction, anything can happen. And it's, and it's a good goal for her. And they'd go on to concede a goal. 4-1 then, it ended this afternoon. Well, the result, Gareth, the most important thing, job done. What did you make of performance? Yeah, very good. At times, some phenomenal play from us. I thought we were excellent in how we managed the game. We probably uh, took us a while to get into our groove like it normally does, but uh, the way we controlled the game was very good. You know, we controlled the, the spaces. We kept the passes short when we needed to. We had space to go in behind on occasions and score some fabulous goals, the second goal especially. I mean, I know Bunnies is an unbelievable strike and there were some good goals today. Obviously, theirs is good as well, not for our point of view, but the second goal was magic for us in terms of everything that we are about and uh, the identity that we tried to play with was was finished off really well by Jess. Yeah, that ruthlessness you showed in that 10 minute period in the first half at this stage in the season must be so pleasing for you with that goal difference in mind. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's uh, it's a really, really good result for us today because this is not an easy place to come to. Liverpool put you under a lot of pressure. You know, we silenced the crowd. The crowd get behind them really well as well. I thought our supporters were really, really good today. Uh, so happy to be able to send them off home uh, going into the break with this with this lead we have at the top of the league, which is great. Perhaps any criticism not coming away with a clean sheet is that quite disappointing? Yeah, we'll always have high standards in that. You know, we we've worked so hard on that this season. If you look and analyse some of the goals we've conceded, you know, Chloe needs to do better in looking after the ball at the top end of the pitch. And Taylor Hines hits a goal that she probably won't hit like that again. Um, she actually scored against us in the in the fixture earlier in the season and she had to do a lot to score then as well so some of those goals have had to be worldies to get past us because the rest of the time with with the likes of Alana, Laya, uh, Alex and, and Kirsten and also with Chiara we look really comfortable today. With the bigger picture though I suppose you're touching it a, a little bit already but does that feel like a statement performance to go top of the, the table with a performance like that this afternoon over the break with those other teams just below you not playing? Yeah, it's big. I think um, I always look at the performance being the, the catalyst for what we do. It always gives us a good chance of being able to win games. doesn't guarantee it, but gives you a chance. And yeah, of course, it's nice for us to be in this position, but it's three points only. You know, we know what we've got to do between now and the end of the season, and we know potentially what others can do. So yeah, it's three points. We move on to the next one. We go to the break now. We get back and, and look forward to West Ham at home. All right, well done today. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers, Gareth. I don't know, maybe we're conjuring up a very, very harsh narrative. But let's have a little look at the goal conceded. What did Mary Fowler call it? A banger, Mark. But, it, you know, ultimately these little goals 
could damage come the end of the season. Yeah, definitely. I mean, look, Chloe Kelly there, I don't think it's her fault whatsoever. I think it's a bad ball to her, let's be honest. Um, the strike is a great strike, really is. I'm going to be critical of Kiara Keating because she is so good. Her footwork is exceptional. She does everything so right. Look at her footwork. She gets across. It's just the angle of her palm. And that's how good she is. And I, I, I was surprised it went in because I expect her to save it. But it's just a critique. And I, I feel that she can be that good and she can save those normally. But it's a wonderful goal. <laughs> we have a little look at uh, their last few matches, their last 12, and only four clean sheets in it. Again, we're painting this picture about goals conceded, but just keep reiterating it could come down to goal difference at the end of the season. Yes, they've conceded 12. Chelsea have conceded 14. But it's just the odd goal here and there, Courtney, that, that could punish them. Yeah, it is. And, and for example, I remember that Liverpool goal when they, they went up 1-0 and that was a, a mistake playing out from the back. So it's those little mistakes that... Yeah, we're not trying to conjure up something. We're not trying to take anything away from Manchester City in terms of their performance, but we know how close it is. There's one goal in it at the moment. Um, so, yeah, if you can you know, take away those little mistakes, then that could be the difference between winning the WSL and not. With Chelsea not playing, facing Arsenal in the, in the League Cup on Sunday, where do you shift that? He said he wanted to be the chase, Gareth Taylor, ahead of this. He wanted to be in that position. Of course you would, state the obvious. However... Does it shift things, do you think, with Chelsea and all the other games Chelsea got played to? Uh, firstly, it needed to be the one being chased because yeah. they were playing more league games, so they needed to win to be in front. Um, that's how it's going to be between now and the end of the season. They're going to try and be the pace setters. They need to if they have any chance of winning the league. Um, would he like to have played more games? Of course, he said it in his, his pre-match interview. He talked about the fact that he'd love to be playing every three days like, like Chelsea are, but they're not. So their full focus is on trying to win the league and take it away from Chelsea. So, yeah, it's all about getting the points on the board because it's really hard mm. to try and chase teams down. Yeah, and what that doesn't show is the, the Champions League couple of matches against Barcelona. Obviously, the match on, on Sunday, the FA Cup they've got as well. The amount of extra games they could have and already have in that, that run-in. Yeah, it is. You know, there's... There's two ways to look at it. Obviously, Gareth wants a few more games, and, and I get that in sense of you know that consistency. But it's on the complete other end of the scale, where Chelsea have probably got a few too many games to fit in with an already depleted squad. So, look, it is going to be difficult, regardless. I think for me, the the one that points out to me is that Arsenal game, and I know they're not in fantastic form, um, Arsenal this season, but I just feel like. At moments, they can turn it on, and I feel, feel like that's the real banana skin potentially for City. Oh, but then what happens with Arsenal in, in the League Cup? You know, how does the confidence change on that? We've got the internationals in. The players you know, come back from that. Who comes back refreshed? I mean, it's everything to talk about, but that's the brilliant thing. It is, and it's a great position to be in for, for Arsenal being a, in, a, in a League Cup final this weekend. For Chelsea, just what Courtney was saying there, for Chelsea, with depleted squad but being in so many competitions... What a great problem to have for Emma Hayes. Like, I know that you want all your squad there. Do you think there. she'll say that? Yeah, in so <laughs> many ways, because she's competing on all fronts, right? So every manager would want to be in that position. And yes, she's had injuries, it. but she was building a squad for this. Of course. And, and yeah, and another an ideal scenario, you'd have your Sam Kerrs and other players back, but it's not the case. But it's a great position to be in. Am I right to be a, a little bit surprised about... I just think Man City have more goals, not just today, but more goals in them overall and yet they, they've scored what one less than, than Chelsea. Yeah, I, I think you're right, especially going into the game today. I was saying, look, they need a, a big scoreline. Then it goes 3-0 at half-time. As soon as they get that fourth one, early on in the first, uh, second rather, 4-0, you're thinking, this is going to be six, this is going to be seven. And you're really expecting them to push on as well as them knowing what's on the line. For some reason, it just didn't quite click. And I'm not overly sure why. As I say, I think you've got to give a bit of credit to Liverpool. Went for it at the back, made it difficult. But I think, you know, the, the players coming off the bench maybe need to influence a little bit more. I think you saw Bunny Shaw, I won't say getting desperate, that's the wrong word, but you could see she, she wanted that hat trick, maybe snatching at things a little bit. So it's just about that composure when the time comes. Did you see my little assist for you then, leaning in front of you too? <laughs> uh, Courtney, Mark, thank you. Have a lovely Easter. Thank you for joining us this Easter.
عندك ديساسي مين وكولول شمال او عندك قلوب دفاع بيلعب منهم تياجو سيلفا والديفندر قدامه لوحده كايسيدو لان هذه مجموعة اخطاء مركبة وان كان الحكمة في بعض الاحيان وكما ظهرنا في بعض المباريات بشكل نوعا ما افضل في اللعب بخطة الثلاثي في الخلف كانت عندنا مقارنة بسيطة ما بين لما لامبرد كان بيلعب باربعة ولما توخل جاي لعب بتلاتة وفي خطة تلاتة اربعة تلاتة اللي كان بيلعب بيها توماس توخل المغزى هنا عزيز المشاهد كانت هناك حماية لخصائص اللاعبين سواء لبين تشيلول عشان يلعب كظهير او لجورجينيو في نص الملعب علشان يدافع في مساحة اصغر من انه يبقى معرض لمواجهة اتنين او تلات لعيبة في مساحة اكبر وايضا عزيز المشاهد لحماية تياجو سيلفا علشان يخليه يدافع في مساحة او في مسافة لاينات او خطوط اصغر ويمكن ده برضو لو المثل ده مش عارف يوضح لك الفرق من خطة التلاتة والاربعة افتكر روديجر من قبل في خطة التلاتة وافتكر روديجر من خطة الاربع مدافعين كيف تحول مدافع كانت الجمهور بالطالب بخروجه في خطة الاربعة ليتحول روديجر لواحد من افضل المدافعين في العالم في خطة التلاتة وتألق بشكل كبير جدا طبعا في الفترة الاخيرة بتاعته مع تشيلسي ومع توماس توخل في خروجه لذلك في بعض احيان الاعتماد على خطة الاربعة ورا بيؤدي الى مشاكل في تشيلسي وهذا هو الخطا الاول. الخطا الثاني اللي بيرتكبه عمنا موريسو بوتيتشينيو هو اللعب بارتكاز وحيد. والخطا الثالث اللي هو مركب على الخطا الثاني هو اللعب بارتكاز وحيد وهو كايسيدو مش انزو ومش اي لاعب ثاني، طبعا في غياب كاساداي في اصابه لافيا، انت بتتكلم في ديفندر ما بين واحد من الاثنين، يا هيلعب كايسيدو يا هيلعب انزو، لان جالاجر اللي احنا شايفينه ان بيحاول السيد موريسو بوتيتشينيو انه يخلي جالاجر يلعب هو من الخط الامامي او تحت المهاجم علشان يكون هو بدايه الضغط الاولى وفي هذه ايضا خطا رابع فانت ممكن تاخد من نص الملعب ثلاث اخطاء توظيف كايسيدو الخطا في ديفندر وحيد يفقده 60% من قوته لانه كان في برايتون بيغطي دايما في وجود مود ديفندر ثاني جنبه فكان دايما كايسيدو بيغطي مساحات اقل عندي بعض الحالات هعرضها بالصور بعد ما اقول الخطايا بتاعته عشان او الخطايا الفنيه يعني عشان نتكلم باستفاضه شويه في الصور. فدايما كايسيدو كان جنبه ماك اليستر او جنبه لاعب تاني غير ماك اليستر جروس او لاعب تاني بيقلل المساحات بتاعته في برايتون فبيدافع دايما في مساحه اصغر ولذلك في السيستم الذي كان موجود في برايتون ظهر كايسيدو بشكل افضل من اللي ظهر بيه مع تشيلسي. لما تبص مثلا مقارنة ما بين كايسيدو وما بين ديكلان رايس اللي هو في نفس الكاتيجوري بتاعه او نفس الاماونت او الصفقة تبص تلاقي ان المساندة اللي بياخدها ديكلان رايس في نص الملعب سواء من الانفيرتد ليفت باك اللي هو بيلعب الدور بتاعه زيتشينكو في احيان كثيرة في الارسنال او كيفور مؤخرا ونزول اوديجارد او جورجينيو او اكس اللي بيلعب مكان جورجينيو في نص الملعب دايما بيخلي ادوار رايس انه يدافع في مساحة اصغر لو جاية قدامه مرتدة او دايما تبقى معاه مسندة من زمايله لما يبقى عليه زيادة عددية في تشيلسي هو خطأ الثاني والثالث والرابع والخامس ان توظيف انزو يفقده الكثير من قوته توظيف كايسيدو يفقده 60-70% من قوته توظيف جاليجر بيضيع جنبه قدرات انزو كايسيدو لان جاليجر ايضا متوظف غلط والخطا الخامس الذي يرتكبه السيد موريسو بوتيتشينيو ان تشيلسي رغم انه بيلعب اربعه ورا لا يوجد ظهير ينعكس يعني على نص الملعب او الانفيرتد ليفت باك او الرايت باك مالو جوستو بيلعب اللعب النمطي جدا للظهير الايمن بيحاول يعمل ابسط اوفر لاب ممكن تحصل مع الجناح عشان يعمل عرضيه عرضيه حتى مالو جوستو لسه مش بالمتقنه اللي نقدر نقول عليها وبتيجي معظمها بيجي ارضي. الناحيه الثانيه على الناحيه الشمال عانى تشيلسي هذا الموسم. شويه نوظف كوكوريا، شويه نوظف بني تشيلول اللي اتصاب وانا طالع اصور هذه الحلقه. في بعض احيان اكثر كان بيلعب كولويل كظهير يسار ودي كانت خطا كبير جدا. منين انت عايز توظف ديفندر لوحده في نص الملعب ومنين عندك الاظهره بتاعتك ما بتضمش على نص الملعب. فما فيش زيادة عددية ولا مساندة للديفندر وانت اصلا اهدرت ادوار جاليجر واهدرت ادوار انزو من قبل ذلك فظهر ان الدفاع بتاعنا كقلوب دفاع ضعاف الاظهرة ضعيفة الديفندر ضعيف وايضا التحول الهجومي بتاعنا كان شكله ضعيف وما عندكش غير قدرات فردية لما بتحاول تلعب على الاطراف او بتسلم الكورة طبعا لكول بالمر المتألق هذا الموسم 
الخطا الاخر من اخطاء السيد موريسو بوتيتشينيو وهي ان بناخد وقت كبير جدا في عمليه البيلد اب او تحضير بناء اللعب من الخلف وكنت بتكلم في مره من المرات فواحد قال لي انت عايز تلغي البيلد اب وحقيقه الامر عزيزي المشاهد ان ما فيش حاجه بتتقال ان مرحله من مراحل اللعب يتم الغائها ما فيش حاجه كده في كره القدم ولكن انا بقول تقليل الوقت بتاعها العب قلل الوقت البيلد اب العب اللعب المباشر هيكون افضل لتشيلسي تمنع اخطاء الاهداف تمنع اخطاء المدافعين تمنع اخطاء الديفندر بتاعك اللي لبسنا منها اكتر من هدف لعدم وجود انفرتد ليفت باك او رايت باك وقله سرعه انزو في المرتدات او في الديفندنج ترانزيشن لما بتتقطع الكوره وترد علينا ودايما وجود كايسيدو لوحده في احيان كثيره بيستقبل تشيلسي اهدافا لان التوظيف بتاع نص الملعب والدفاع وحتى الشق الهجومي خطا كبير يظهر تشيلسي بشكل حلو جدا والناس بتحاول تتغاضى عن نص الملعب والاخطاء الفنيه من المدرب في النواحي الدفاعيه وفي ناحيه نص الملعب على طاري وعلى سيره طيب ده احنا خلقنا فرص كتيره هو هيعمل ايه موريسو بوتيتشينيو هو هينزل يسجل بنفسه الحقيقه لا ولكن اللعب باسلوب توتنهام او باسلوب 2018 2019 وتوقع الهجوم الضاري وعدم تامين المناطق الدفاعيه وعدم حتى عمل ريستنج ديفنس قبل ما تخش على الدفاع بتاعك بيؤثر بالسلب بشكل كبير جدا على تشيلسي لانك لو استسلمت لفورمه لاعب زي نونو مدويكي او بالمر ما كانش في يومه او رحيم ستيرلينج وما اكثر اخطائه في الشق الامامي او جاكسون او مودريك او اي حد من اللي بيلعب في الشق اللي قدامه واتقطعت منه الكوره دايما بيحصل علينا اتاكينج ترانزيشن بشكل اسرع استقبلنا منه اكثر من هدف فدايما الاهتمام او التركيز مع فكره احنا ضيعنا كم هدف هو المدرب هينزل يعمل ايه واهمال ما يترتب على ضياع الكوره اثناء ما انت بتهاجم لو ارتدت عليك ايه اللي هيحصل في فرقتك ده في اجحاف لان مش اجحاف للمدرب ولا للعيبه ده في اهمال ان المدرب مقصر والحقيقه المدرب مقصر لان ما فيش حاجه في الكوره بتقول انا هعدل لك الاكس جي بتاعتك ومش هتعد عليا الاكس جي اللي انا بستقبله او ازاي تشيلسي بيتم تهديد مرماه من فرق اقل منه وشفنا مباريات كثيره احنا خسرناها بسبب كوره او بسبب مرتده مباراه ايفرتون مباراه مانشستر يونايتد مباراه استون فيلا بتاعت الدور الاول مباراه برينتفورد دور اول ودور ثاني مباراه نوتنجهام فورست مباريات كثيره لبسنا فيها بسبب ان احنا بنستقبل اهداف من المرتدات لانك بتهاجم بدون ما تعمل دفاع او ريستك ديفنس او حتى دفاع بشكل سليم زي ما هنتكلم بعد شويه في الصور فالخطا الهجومي هو انك ما تذكرش بس الاكس جي او ان تشيلسي عمل هجمات وازاي واللعيبه والفينش وجاكسون ورحيم ستيرلينج ولكن انت برضو مش عايز تفكر في ان جزئيه اللعب انا بتكلم على موريسو بوتيتشيني انا اللعب في البريمير ليج في 2023 2024 اختلف تماما عن 2016 2017 2018 انت فاكر انك هتهاجم ومحدش بيرجع عليك دلوقتي باتاك او بيعمل عليك مرتدات اللعبه اتغيرت مفاهيمها انت ما عدتش في 2018 وما عدتش في 2017 حاليا معانا فرق كتير في البريمير ليج من احسن الفرق اللي بتلعب كونتر اتاك في اوروبا مش بس في انجلترا برايتون يعرف يعملها بشكل سليم برينتفورد يعرف يعملها بشكل سليم نيوكاسل بيعرف يعملها بشكل سليم فولهام بيعرف يعملها بشكل سليم وطبعا حدث ولا حرج على ارسنال وعلى السيتي وعلى مانشستر يونايتد وعلى ليفربول وعلى توتنهام ففكره انك بتلعب بالهجوم اللي يعد لك اكس جي بس احنا محتاجين مهاجم وتتغافل عن المشاكل الدفاعيه الجامه في تشكيله تشيلسي هو تنويم لنفسك ومحاوله من المدرب بس ان احنا او من المدافعين عن المدرب ان احنا نروح نفكر في جزئيه هي فرعيه ونهمل الجزئيه الاساسيه ان تشيلسي فريق اصبح لا يدافع بشكل جيد تعالوا نستعرض بعض من الصور عشان نفهم تركيبة الخطايا الفنية للسيد موريسو بوتيتشينيو ازاي بتتجمع كلها في بعض الالعاب اللي استقبلنا منها اهداف واللي خلتنا بنخسر مباراة اول صورة معانا في مباراة ايفرتون الصورة دي بتتكلم على الهدف الاول دي قصة الهدف الاول لايفرتون زي ما انت شايف الكرة كانت معانا وارتدت من جاليجر اول دايرة في نص الملعب اللي هو قدام الحكم ده جاي كايسيدو زي ما انت شايف كايسيدو بيغطي في مساحة كبيرة لوحده مكشوف في نص الملعب مفيش اي مسنة دفاعية وعلى الرغم من ان في ثلاثة لعيبة من 